Your PC probably has a type of memory called DDR5, DDR4, or maybe even DDR3 if you haven't gotten around to upgrading in a really long time. But did you know that there was a possible timeline where your RAM wasn't DDR SD RAM at all? Back in 1999, a company called Rambus released a kind of memory called RD RAM that they named after themselves, setting themselves up extremely well for their own downfall with a side of hubris. RD RAM's design was meant to propel Rambus to the top of the high speed memory industry by narrowing the interface or bus coming off the memory modules. Instead of using a 64 bit wide bus, as was industry standard, RD RAM used a much narrower 16 bit bus. Although this smaller number may sound worse, a narrower bus allowed the chip to run at faster clock speeds. Ah, yes, you knew there was going to be a higher number in there somewhere. RD RAM also used one of the same fundamental concepts as modern DDR memory. It could send two data signals per clock cycle rather than just one. If you think of a clock cycle as looking like a wave, data can be sent on both the rising and falling sides of that wave, hence the term double data rate. The net effect of these design changes was a significant increase in overall memory bandwidth. Basically, it would be faster since it could move more data around at once compared to conventional solutions that only sent one data signal per clock cycle and used a wider but slower bus. This bandwidth advantage meant that Nintendo used RD RAM in the Nintendo 64, as 3D games required lots of memory bandwidth. The N64's use of this new high speed RAM in a product that sold for less than 200 bucks got Intel interested in using RD RAM as a way to increase the performance of systems based on its new Pentium 4 CPU lineup. With a massive tech giant like Intel signing a deal with Rambus, you would think that this would be Rambus ticket on board the gravy train, baby. But unfortunately, that thing derailed pretty quickly. We'll tell you why right after we thank Drop. Their custom 80 hot swappable mechanical keyboard is a 10 keyless layout, which means more space for your mouse while sacrificing as few keys as possible. What makes this keyboard stand out from the crowd is how the top case, which is basically the upper portion of the housing, magnetically attaches to the bottom part, opening up a world of customization options. It's also now available at Best Buy, so go pick one up there or at drop.com. Although Intel felt good enough about RD RAM to use it as the exclusive memory for the Pentium 4, a major issue was how much RD RAM cost for the average computer user. Even though it was cost effective for the Nintendo 64, it was very expensive for PCs. And not only that, the supposed performance benefits for typical computer users didn't materialize. Although the high bandwidth was useful for 3D graphics and game consoles, it didn't translate to a better experience for the average consumer who paid extra for a computer with a Pentium 4. RD RAM had notoriously high latency, sucked down a great deal of power, and produced lots of waste heat, meaning consumers weren't getting great value for the money, not to mention that RD RAM modules either had to be installed in pairs or be installed as a single stick paired with a dummy continuity module that looked like a RAM stick but didn't actually have any memory on it. Instead, a continuity module simply reflected signals so that they could make their way to the rest of your system. In fact, if you remember the jumper pack on the Nintendo 64, that was actually a continuity module that could be removed in case you wanted to buy that red expansion pack accessory, which actually contained additional memory to enable better graphical quality. To make matters worse for RAM bus, a cheaper alternative, simply called DDR SD RAM, showed up in retail PCs starting in 2000. While it provided the similar two signals per clock cycle paradigm of RD RAM, it used a conventional 64-bit wide bus and was a lot cheaper and didn't have to be installed in pairs, meaning it quickly outcompeted RD RAM. By the time late 2001 rolled around, Intel started releasing chipsets for the Pentium 4 that supported the cheaper DDR SD RAM. And by 2003, RD RAM was mostly no longer supported by new PCs, with DDR SD RAM winning the standards war. This, however, wasn't the end for RAM bus. Even though RD RAM was a commercial flop, they did actually develop many patents concerning double data rate memory. But unfortunately for them, they gained a reputation as being quite litigious as they spent years suing companies such as Samsung, Hynix, and Nvidia for alleged patent infringement, including one embarrassing incident where a judge found that Rambus destroyed evidence with a shredder. 
Rambus itself also got into trouble with the American FTC and European Union for alleged anti-competitive behavior relating to just how many inventions the company was claiming in its patents. Over time though, Rambus settled its outstanding lawsuits and they're actually still around now as a company that makes memory controllers having decided to go with a more collaborative approach instead of being cutthroat, suey people. In fact, if you'd invested in Rambus 10 years ago, you'd have more than tripled your money. So who says nice guys can't finish first or bad guys who become less bad and finish eventually? There's a lesson here. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, check out our other video on how DDR works.